complete on that deliverable or are you not? What's the schedule outlook and what's the cost outlook? And then change requests. This refers to any change request pertaining to issues that you need to change, then you need to put in a change request. It could require implementation of approved changes. The project could, and these could be direct, indirect, external, internal, optional, legal, or contractual changes. So again, corrective action, preventive action, and defect repair. Go study those. And you've got project management plan updates and project document updates. Page 350. I'm going to write it down so that you see it. 350. PMBOK guide. Go and look at project management plan. Right? Project management plan components. And go and look at project documents. There's a difference between the project management plan and project documents. The components that make up the project management plan and the project documents, they are talked about on page 350. You do need to know that, OK? Now let's look back up here at monitor and control project work, our next process. It's all about monitoring and controlling the work on the project. Monitoring and controlling processes involve monitoring project work, taking action, to control the work, collecting information, measuring information, assessing information. So here's our data flow diagram. We can see that the main thing that we get from here is change requests and project document updates. But your change requests are a big one because as you monitor and control project work, you'll end up getting change requests. So we pretty much know everything here. You'd probably agree about that, right? Project management plan, performance reports, right? Reports about performance on the project. Expert judgment, the tool and technique, we've talked about that. And then you've got change requests. So we're not going to dwell here. Monitor and control project work is all about monitoring and controlling the project work. Things not going according to plan, we have to control them, right? We have to make sure that they conform to the project's requirements. That's monitoring and controlling in a nutshell. Now let's move on to the next process. We're just going to skip over all the inputs, tools and techniques and outputs. Move into perform integrated change control. This refers to controlling scope and project changes through the timely review of change requests. This is where the change control board lives. So any changes have to be coordinated, right? We have to influence factors that prevent integrated change control, factors that circumvent integrated change control. We have to prevent those. For example, you're working on a project, you're the project manager, you've got people working on the project with you. Say you have someone who's the CEO's pet, for example, and that person thinks, oh, I know the CEO, I'm not going to follow the integrated change control processes, I'm not going to go to the CCB. I'm just going to try and make that change on my own, and I'm going to try and circumvent the right process. The project manager needs to prevent such people from circumventing the process, right? So it's all about coordinating the changes, documenting the impact of change requests, and all changes should be documented and stored. Jumping straight ahead to the data flow diagram, we can see the inputs, right? Change requests, I input, major input here. And then at the end of the day, we've actually got these outputs. We can either have project management plan updates, we could have the project document updates, or we could have change request status updates, which is updates to the change request status. People who make those requests need to be informed that those requests are a yay or a nay from the change control board. So here we are, we can see inputs, which we know already, the tools and techniques, change control meetings we haven't talked about, and the output. So let's go very quickly to change control meetings and talk about change control meetings. This refers to meetings of the Change Control Board to review change requests. The CCB is responsible for reviewing, approving, or rejecting change requests. And the roles of people in the CCB are agreed on and defined by stakeholders. The other output here that you don't know about, change request status updates. Change request status updates refers to the updates of the status. So the project manager needs to alert people who have made a request about the fact of approval or rejection. 
The status of all changes should be updated in the change request log as part of the project document updates. And then we've got project management plan updates and project document updates, which are a no-brainer. You know about these because you have looked at page 350. Hopefully, you have looked at page 350. Now, the last one, closed project or phase. We've talked about closed project or phase previously. It refers to the finalization of all activities across all of the project processes, all of the project process groups to formally close the project. Let's go ahead to the data flow diagram. You can see here that we've got our project management plan going in because that's going to help you close the project, going to give you the information on how you decided you were going to close the project. Organizational process assets updates are an output. And then we've got our final product service or result transition. So when you come out with that final software application, you don't just hand it over to the customer and say bye. You actually have to have a formal transition in which the people being trained and everyone else understands that there's a transition of responsibilities over to them. That is really what your closed project or phase is all about. The major output is the final product service or result transition. Okay? So over here we can see we've got the inputs, tools and techniques and outputs. We pretty much know everything because we've talked about it. So I'm going to go a few steps ahead and go straight to our final product service or result transition. Final transition of the deliverable of the project or phase. And then the other very important output is organizational process assets updates. Because as you go through the project, you are updating your OPAs. Show you what I mean here. We've got, let's say we've got our project, we've got the different initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, controlling, and closing. When you get from here to here, right, that is where your charter is issued and you're beginning to start the project. From the moment you start churning out those organizational process asset updates, there will be updates. Right? It depends on which process, but anywhere there's an update to your OPAs, right? There will be subsequent updates all throughout the life cycle till you get to closing. And that's where you've got your final organizational process assets updates in the closing process group under closed project or phase. And if you look here, you can see you've got project files, you've got project or phase closure documents, and you've got historical information. All of this right, should be in your organizational process assets updates. And remember the term we talked about. We talked about lessons learned. We talked about post-mortem analysis, right? Those terms kind of go in line with that. You definitely need to be aware of those. And last thing I want to bring up in project integration management is the kickoff meeting, right? The kickoff meeting is the meeting that you hold with the team. Now, the most important thing is you need to hold this meeting after you develop the project charter. Out of preference, you could hold this after you have developed the project management plan. At the end of planning, you can have your kickoff meeting. Or you could decide to have your meeting at the end of developing your charter. It really depends on the project. If it's a very intense project and you've got so many people working on the plan, maybe it's a multi-year government contract, maybe 12 years spanning very long, you might want to get people up front you know, into a kickoff and kind of decide what you're going to do. But that's the kickoff meeting. It's the first meeting with project team and stakeholders. It introduces members of the project team and the client, discusses the roles, risks, and issues at a high level, clarifies any issues. So we're at the end here. Questions and dialogue. Why is it important to have a project charter? Who is responsible for developing the project management plan? Now, the term responsible Right? And the term participates in are very subjective terms. Because the project manager is ultimately responsible for many things, but many people participate in those things. For example, looking back here, we've got 
who is responsible for developing the project management plan? It's really the project manager, right? But we've got lots of people working on it. What information is contained in the project charter? What information is contained in a project management plan? Who is responsible for developing the project charter and how does the configuration management system differ from the change control system? Now, I want you to go back into the PMBOK guide. Look at the difference between configuration management system and change control system. And that brings us to the end of project integration management. Let's look at our accomplishments here. What have we accomplished? We've talked about project selection methods, talked about how to stay integrated in a project, what makes a good integrator? We've talked about the inputs, tools and techniques and outputs of project integration management, and we've tried to understand the logic behind project selection. Next, we're going to be moving on to chapter five in the PMBOK guide, project scope management.